Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Let me know Good if you morning. can hear me. Good morning. Hello, Claudia, Daniel, Daniela, Mariana, Fernanda. Welcome. We'll get started here in just. Good morning. In just a second. Today, we're going to be talking about the APA manual. And I was taking a look at your paragraphs from yesterday, taking a look at your citations and references, and thought it might be a good idea to dedicate today's class to all things APA. Well, not all things, but almost all things. And so I want to spend this time taking a look at the paragraphs that you worked on yesterday and hopefully some paragraphs that you're working on in your writing class. Everything we talk about today in terms of APA, it's the same that applies to your writing class. And we really want you guys to have kind of a good introduction to APA as you get into the BA next next year, next semester, right? As you get into HSAE, right? Where you're going to be asked to write two essays and later in Redacción and in, uh, in your fourth semester, right? And then later on in academic writing. Today is going to apply to any type of essay that you're asked to write when they ask you to follow APA, right? So APA is a, a and reference. It's a way to show ideas that are coming from an outside source. So it's very important that you have a good understanding of this understanding APA means that you're more likely to avoid plagiarism, black heel, right? So we want to try to avoid plagiarism. And if we understand APA, it's going to help. All right. So what I want to do today is I'm going to show my screen. And it looks like some of you have already entered into the document. I think that's a pretty good idea to do that. I'm going to talk about a lot of things today, though, and the sessions are being recorded. Every session has been recorded and it's made avail available to you in Microsoft Teams. So you may need to go back to the recording if you feel that you need to review something once again. Now, this activity that was due yesterday, right? We have these instructions, and I highly recommend that you reread these instructions. These are instructions that we've talked about on several occasions in our live sessions. So make sure, for example, when you're making your final changes, that you are removing the comments. Okay, so there should be no comments along the side. Right, so as you're making the changes to your paragraph, please remove all the comments. Now, citations. All right, the first thing I would like to say is I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of the document. All the way down, all the way down. Here we go. Now, when you're including your references and Take a look at your own academic essay that you're doing in your writing class, because it's the same idea. If you're writing it in Microsoft Word, you need a page break before references. The references occur at the very end of your document. So since we have a lot of different individual paragraphs, we're going to have only one section for all of the references, for all of the paragraphs, in this document. Okay, it's almost like a single document, right, that you're all contributing to. And we're going to have one section at the very end of the document that begins with a page break 
and it has the heading references. OK, just like it shows here. Now. Some of you have included your. Uh, your references, OK? The thing that we need to do is if your references appear up here, for example, right, we need to move our references, all of our references down here. Now, how do we organize our references? What do you guys think? Does it matter the order of each reference? You guys can activate your mic. Should it be like the order of of the paragraphs are? Um, not exactly. Anybody else have any ideas about how? Think about the references that you included in your own essay in your writing class. How did you organize those references? Anybody else have any ideas? How did you organize your references in in your essay in your in your writing class? Have you guys written uh, an essay in your writing class? If you haven't, just let me know. I'm just I'm asking if you guys have written an essay in your writing class. Um, we haven't. We have uh, write uh, an essay in our writing class, but we haven't put any APA, APA format. OK, so you haven't included citations or references? Nope. OK, so a citation. A citation is something that we include in our paragraphs, in our body paragraphs, usually maybe in the introduction paragraph. And let me find an example. Uh, let's see here. All right, so. A citation is going to occur within the paragraph, within parentheses, and the citation is going to be included within the sentence of your paragraph. So the first thing you need to do when you look at your paragraph, all right, read each sentence and ask yourself, is this sentence my idea, is it an original idea, or does this idea come from an outside source? Now, there is one exception. If it's common knowledge, okay, if it's, a, if it's common knowledge, you know, the world is round, okay, that's not my original idea. I didn't come up with that myself, but it's common knowledge. Everyone knows it. So you don't have to cite what's common knowledge. But if it comes from an outside source and it's not common knowledge, then we need to include a citation. We need to say, we need to tell the reader, this idea comes from someone else that's not my idea. Because if we don't do that, then we're stealing. That's plagiarism. And we actually have a policy in our department if you commit plagiarism, you get a zero for the assignment, OK? So it's very important. And all it takes is one sentence to commit plagiarism, one small mistake. And so when you look at each sentence 
Ask yourself, look at the first sentence. OK, is this my idea or did I get it from someone else? And then take a look at the next sentence. Is this idea coming from an outside source or is it my own original idea? If it's coming from an outside source, then we need to include the citation. Now I'm going to jump to Microsoft Teams. In Microsoft Teams, I've included a link to a presentation, and I highly recommend that you save this link. This I've had this presentation for a long time. I continue to add to it, to modify it. Um, again, if you guys look at this manual, this is a brand new manual, in fact, that came out within the year, but within the last year. Uh, this is the seventh edition, and they they do there are changes, right? They do change over time. The sixth edition was out for almost ten years, and this is a brand new edition with some with some modifications, with some changes. So this presentation I'm going to keep, and I'm going to keep out there so that you guys, anyone, any student can go and act. All right, now I'm going to open up the presentation, but again, I recommend that you save the link someplace, save it in your browser so that you can access it anytime that you're writing an academic essay and you need uh, you need to check, you need to review something. Now, this presentation is rather long and I'm not going to go through all of it. I think the most important section of this presentation, let me see if I can get it up here is section 10. All right, so I'm going to go to chapter or section or chapter 10, chapter 10, where it says reference examples. I think for me, this is the most important because it shows you examples of how to reference. Now, these are references that occur at the very end of the document. OK, it doesn't show you examples of citations but it shows you examples of references. But yesterday in Microsoft Teams, I uploaded some images that do include some examples of citations. So I'm going to show you one example here. If you're looking at my screen, you'll notice I have here an example of a TED Talk. Now you'll notice that there are two examples at the top these are references. These two examples down at the bottom are citations. Again, citations occur in the paragraph. References occur at the so at the very end of the document. Now, citations, there are typically two types. The first type is called parenthetical citation. And this is, I would suggest, the the Mm, the, the preferred way of citing, okay? I would prefer that all students use parenthetical. Now, a par parenthetical citation means that your citation is going to include the author's last name only. So notice here, you have Gertz, comma, S. S is this person's first name. All right, so the first initial is followed by the person's last name. This is in the reference. But notice in the citation, we only include the last name. If we have two authors, then we'll have Gertz and, right, Smith, comma, and then the year. If we have three authors, we're going to have Gertz, comma, Smith, comma, and Summers, comma, and then the year. So if we have a series, then we're going to need the serial comma. We'll need to offset by commas. But if we have two authors, we don't, we don't need a comma to separate the two, right? We just say Gertz and Smith. So here we have Gertz, comma, and then the year, 28, uh, 2018, 2018, and and then here we have semicolon TED. Now what they're doing here is including two sources, two citations. And you know, it's 
I think for our purposes and most of your cases for this assignment, you're probably only going to have one source. OK, so you could just have Gertz comma 2018 parentheses. And all of this is in the in within the citation. This is called the parenthetical citation. This is going to occur very important here. This is going to occur at the end of the sentence. At the end of the sentence. All right, so. Let me go to let me show you an example. All right, so I'm in the document. And I'm going to give you some examples here. So. Examples of citations. So Gertz 2018. All right, this would be an example. So let's say that I have a sentence. Blah. Blah. That's my awesome sentence. Space. So these are words. Whatever that this is in my words, I'm saying what Gertz said. I'm taking his or her idea. I don't know if it's male or female. So I have someone else's ideas. I'm putting him in my own words, space, and then I include the citation. Now, here's something very important, very, very, very important. Notice where I put the period. Notice where I do not put the period. Notice that the period does not occur at the end of my words. Notice that the period does not occur before the citation. Notice that the period occurs after the citation. Here's the point. The citation needs that it relates to. I'll say that again. The citation needs to occur inside the sentence that it relates to. Because if you put it like this, you might say, oh, pues detalle, pues es lo mismo. What if I put it like that? That's plagiarism. That's the difference if you're, if you're asking that question. It's not the same. This is plagiarism. This is not plagiarism. This is plagiarism. This is not plagiarism. Why? Because if you put the period here, guess what? I'm saying blah, 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 blah. This idea that's coming from an outside source and I failed to include the citation within the sentence. You may say, no, but it's this, right? Because you might have another sentence out afterwards. But the reader doesn't know, well, okay, does this apply to blah, 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 or, or this gibberish? Which one? They're going to have to take a guess. They got a 50-50 chance. They're going to flip a coin. Heads, it's blah, 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 blah. Tails, it's gibberish. Which is it? Well, we don't know. So you as the writer, your responsibility is to make it clear. Which idea is your idea, the original idea? Which ideas are coming from an outside source? And how can you clarify? Simply making sure that within each sentence, you have your citation. Now it's clear, super clear. Blah, 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 blah is coming from Gertz, and this gibberish here is my original idea. It's clear. There's no confusion whatsoever. All right. This is called a parenthetical citation because it's within the parentheses. Parenthetical is the adjective for parentheses. Parenthetical. Now, there's other ways to cite, and it's not my favorite. This is my favorite, what I just mentioned here. This is what I suggest most because most to most students in most cases because it's better to focus on the concepts. The blah, 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 blah is more important than who said the blah, 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 blah. But you could say, according to Gertz, and then the citation, the year, comma, blah, blah. Now I'm going to paraphrase, all right? doesn't matter if I direct quote or... If I paraphr or if I paraphrase, it's the same idea, right? If I'm if I'm going to do a direct quote, okay, fine, I'll put it in parentheses or uh, quotation marks, 
And this blah, 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 blah is going to be exactly word for word what Gertz said. OK. So it's the same. Now, if you are direct quoting one other thing, OK, you could then you would need to include the page number. OK, so the page number is included when you are direct quoting. OK, but you never want to direct quote more than 15 percent. No more than 15 percent. Should be direct quotes. OK, it's always better to paraphrase. The only thing the only time that we include direct quotes is if somebody says something really, really unique or profound or maybe seminal that to a particular area or field, right? That's something really, really important. Then you might direct quote the person. All right, so here, if, if I'm going to include a direct quote here, you know, for our purposes, I'm just telling you this so that you know, okay? Uh, for our purposes, I don't want any direct quotes. I, I want everything paraphrased in your own words. Here we would add in the parent within the parentheses the page number. Okay, that's what it would look like if it's a direct quote. Again, if it's a paraphrase, it's going to look like this. Okay, again, this is parenthetical. Now, the narrative, this is a, an example of a narrative. This is parenthetical. And let's copy this bad boy. And we'll move this down here. This is an example of a narrative. Narrative. Citation, and this is going to be different. This is going to be Gertz, like that. So you could say, according to Gertz, blah, 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 blah. Or you could say, or mentioned, or declared, or claimed comma, or claimed, let's see. All right, stated that blah, blah. And again, I'm paraphrasing, right? I'm putting it into my own words, right? I could have also direct quoted if I wanted to and included the page number at the end. But notice here, what's the difference? Well, the difference is you're focusing here the narrative you're focusing on the author. You're saying, OK, this is more important. Who said it? When you focus on when you do a parenthetical, you're focusing more on the blah, 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 the idea, the concept. And in most cases, it's better to focus on the concept because that's more important. And it actually makes it easier to write to transition your ideas when we focus more on the concepts than the authors. So. Here, guys, we have some examples. These are citations. I would use the parenthetical for this assignment. Okay, you decide what's most appropriate if you're writing, if you're going to include citations in your essay. And 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 so that's what I'd like for you to focus on. So when you're looking at your paragraphs, just check each sentence. Here's a common mistake. A common mistake is including the citation at the end of a paragraph to say, OK, the second paragraph, this applies to the second paragraph or the third paragraph. Um, no, it needs to go within the sentence that it supports. Again, because as the reader, there should be no confusion as to which idea, which sentence is an original idea, which sentence is not. Now, when you guys are writing your sentences, don't make this mistake. Each sentence should be 100% original or 
each sentence should be 100% coming from an outside source. Do not mix the two. Do not include a sentence with an original idea and in the same sentence include some, something that comes from an outside source. And the reasoning is very simple. If you include a sentence with both an original idea and an idea that comes from an outside source, and you include a citation in there, the reader doesn't know what's original and what's not. And that's the whole point of correctly using citations and references. We want it to make it clear to the reader what ideas are original and what ideas are not. This is very important in academic writing that you make that distinction. And when you write, you need, you need evidence, you need ideas to support your topic sentence. And usually it's better to bring in outside information to support your evidence, support the details, the examples. So many of you have included statistics, You've included a lot of good detail, and we want to make sure that we include a citation to say, okay, this is where I got the information, and this is where you can go if you want to find out more about what I'm saying in this paragraph. All right, so th those, those are citations, okay? Basically, the last name only and the year is going to be sufficient for just about every type of citation, whether it's a website, an article, even a, uh, a video in most cases. Okay, most citations are very similar. What are different are the references. Okay, so let's go down all the way to the bottom. And let's talk about references now. We've talked about citations. Now, references, this is what's difficult about APA. Every different type of source of, um, every type of different source that is included in a reference is different. Let me, uh, let me uh, share my screen here, or stop sharing my screen so I can see the camera, all right? So again, this is, this, this is the uh, seventh edition. All right, and there is a section on reference examples. And I'm just taking a quick look because they're all numbered. They start with the number one. You can see here, it's kind of hard to see, but you see here, it shows number one, a journal. This is, and it shows an example. It shows an example of each type, number two, number three, do you want to take a guess on how many different references are included in this book? I mean, I don't want to scare you, but let me let me just entertain entertain you here for a moment. Yeah, and and it's pages and on pages, and each one they have examples and explanation. And I'm still turning my pages. I'm still turning. I know the class is almost over, right? 114 examples. This is the last one. If you don't believe me, here you go. It's a website, I think. 114. Each one has an example. This is what's difficult about APA, is that depending on the type of reference, right, every type of reference has slightly different rules. Now, the good thing is, of all those 114 different types, you're probably only going to really need no more than four or five for the most part. Those are going to be the most common. And when you get into more further advanced writing classes, right, you're probably going to be limited to three types, and they're all going to be articles, not even books, no websites. They're going to be peer-reviewed journal articles. All right, so the good thing is you don't have to worry about knowing or memorizing 114 different types of references. In fact, you don't have to memorize any of them. You need to have examples. For example, the ones that I've shared in Microsoft Teams. 
All right, now I'm sharing these on these examples of newspapers and blog posts and TED Talks and YouTube videos because I know for our assignment, those were the types of references that many of you have used. But when you get into your writing class and academic writing, it's going to be more about journals, right? They're going to be a little bit different. But look at this example of the TED Talk. Notice the sections. You've got the authors and then in parentheses, the year and the month. Then you have the title of the video. Now, here's what you have to pay close attention to. Which text is italicized? Well, in this case, the title of the video is in, italis it's in italics. Como inclinada. You know, the text is italicized. Every, sub, every type of reference, there's some of the text is going to be italicized, right? Then it has TED conferences, so you need to have TED conferences, and then the URL, all right? That's, what, that's an example of what it's going to look like. All right, now here, let's look at a YouTube video. It's going to be a little bit different, right? It's still going to have the URL. It's going to have the name of the video, but it, it's similar, right? It's not drastically different, but it's going to be uh, slightly different depending on if there's an author, if there's a person's name associated with <clears throat> the video versus maybe a video that doesn't have the, um, doesn't have, uh, there's no name associated with the video. Now in your writing class, you're going to have, if, you, if you're going to include articles, I don't know if you're even using articles, but this would be an example of an article, right? So this is different. It's got the author's last name. It's got the name of the article. And in italicized text, it has the name of the journal with the volume number, the issue number, page numbers, okay? So again, the easiest way to do this is to take a look and look at these examples have uh, you have websites from different languages. So you might want to take a look at this example because this is the example that you need to follow. Of course, you're going to change the name, the, the author's names and uh, all the details, but I want you to pay close attention to the way in which the, the of the of the pages are occur right so you're going to put it in Spanish first because most of you are finding sources in Spanish and then in brackets you're going to translate the title you need to put it in English right we're assuming an English reader so this needs to be translated the title of the page or the article and then the, this is the name of the journal, but it could be the website, right? And then the link. Okay, so this is a good example here that you can uh, focus on if you are using websites from a different language. All right, so let's go back here. So the first thing here is to move all of our references to the end of the document. The second thing we need to do, guys, is organize or put in order the references alphabetically. So we need to alphabetize the references according to, in most cases, the author's last name. All right, so again, remember that the author's last name comes first, comma, and then the first initial. So let's take a look at this. The Zumbu. So we have, I guess, the last name, comma, the first initial, period, and then and, and then the author's last name, comma, and then first initial. I would add a period after the first initial. And I think I would, uh, yeah, and you need to indicate a, a period here after the first initial. All right, then in parentheses, we have the year and then the month and the day in this case. Then we're going to have the title of the article. 
And it looks like this, the conversation is the name of the, the page, the website. Now here we want to italicize the conversation. Let's open this up. Let's take a look at the, yeah, so this is a journal. All right, so here we want to, let's see here. What I would do is I would treat this as a, an, a newspaper, online newspaper. So I would follow this example in Microsoft Teams for a newspaper article. Let's take a look at that. All right, so we've got, again, the author, we've got the year, the month, and the date. But notice what's italicized. The name of, in this case, the Washington Post. All right, the Washington Post is italicized, and then we have the, the website. So here, in our case, we will need to include the conversation. We'll italicize that. Just the, well, I can't highlight that. And basically, that's all, that's all we need to do. Now, the other thing we need to also look at, and I'll probably do this at the end, but there's another thing we need to look at, and that is the indentation. I'm going to take one example here. We're going to keep our same font. Make sure that you keep the same font in your references as, as what you have in the rest of your text. But notice what I'm going to do here. I'm going to format the text and we're going to do this uh, let's see if i can find line spacing line spacing options all right so line spacing options we need to make sure that we have zero space before and after the indentation we want to make sure we have single space and notice this spacing before and after we want this to be zero. Now the indentation before the text and after the text. After the text, let's try. Now I'm in centimeters. It's better to do this in uh, in uh, pulgadas in uh, inches because we need a we need a zero point five inch indentation. I'll see if I can do this. Yeah, well, let's leave it at that for now and hit OK. And it didn't change. It's easier to do this when you have it in Word that you've got the slider bars. Uh, let's try this one more time. If I can't do it here, I'll show you. I'll show you here in, on a doc in a document. Okay. Yeah, I can't do it. Let me open up a document. All right. So you select the text and you bring the slider bars over like this. I usually bring them both over. Oops. I don't want to do that. All right, basically that's it, all right? The first line is all the way to the left, and then all subsequent lines have a 0 0.5 inch indentation, all right? So this is what it would look like. And if you use the slider bars, it's much easier because then when you, you create the next reference and then you want to double space between each reference, so two spaces, and then you're off and you do your next citation, Notice how it automatically formats the text, and then you get your next one. All right, so you would organize your references in this way, following these indentations. If you have problems with indentations, don't worry about it um, at this point, but that's the correct way to list out a reference. But we need to alphabetize. So this Zizumbu is going to be all the way at the end, probably. And any references that begin with A are going to be at the top. Okay, so we, but again, it needs to be alphabetized by the author's last name. Or in this case, if there is no author, 
than the title of the page or the website. All right, but again, the idea is to try to get examples of each reference if you're not sure. If you have a type of reference and you're not sure and it's not in the presentation, then let me know and I'll find an example here uh, from, from the manual. All right, so a lot of information, all right? It's not difficult, but there are, there are a lot of small details that are really important. And I feel that you guys need to have an understanding, at least an introduction of APA going into next semester before you get into HSAE, right? Where you're going to be asked again to write out two academic essays according to APA. And when anybody asks you for an academic essay according to APA, what we're talking about here today, this is what we're talking about, how to cite and how to reference. All right, now there are some examples here. You'll notice uh, in Wendy's case that she included para, P-A-R-A. -A. This is instead of, um, instead of using page numbers, because this is a website, you would need to indicate para if you're using a direct quote, right? So this would be an example of quoting someone from a website where you would indicate para to say, okay, which paragraph does this direct quote come from? Okay, so that would be, that's why you see that here. Otherwise, if it came from a journal or a book or some sort of uh, publication or uh, a physical publication, then you would indicate the page number and uh, indicate it in the citation. All right. Any questions, guys, about APA? A lot of information, and this is just an introduction, but make sure that when you include your citations, you know, most of your, your evidence sentences and your paragraphs should occur towards the beginning. Not, not necessarily the first sentence, because the first sentence should be a topic sentence, but probably your second sentence should be an evidence sentence, right, where you're, uh, you're including a citation whether it's from a video, whether it's from a news, online newspaper, online magazine, maybe even a journal. And again, most of the evidence needs to be towards the top because you want to introduce the evidence first and then you can comment on the evidence. All right, so what I would do is in your references, if you guys have your references down here, select your text, make sure we're all using Calibri, font size 11. If you can manage the indentations, then try to do so. Again, I'm not sure why I'm not able to do that here, but. And how many of you have used citations like uh, in high school? Did you guys have to cite anything before in uh, high school? And did you use APA? No. Or did you... no? Okay. No. <laughs> no? All right. So something new then. All right. And it's something really important, guys. And, uh, and it's important that you guys have kind of an idea how to, to do this. The main thing, again, take a look at each sentence and uh, make sure that you're not mixing information that's coming from an outside source versus information that's coming from your own original idea. Any questions? I know it's a lot of information. I get it. And uh, the reason, you know, I'm recording all these classes and especially this one, because again, this is if this is all new, this is going to be a lot of information, so try to, if you have to, go back to the recording. Uh, just ask questions. Ask your, your instructor. Ask me, of course, if you have questions about, you know, APA. Uh, because, again, you want to be familiar enough with APA so that you avoid plagiarism. 
and we don't want anyone to experience problems with plagiarism, right? And it could be by accident, you know, it's maybe it's unintentional. It's not that you're trying to cheat the system. It's just you made a mistake with APA, right? And in, and in, in academic circles and when you're going to school, especially at this level, right, when you're writing, it's very, very important that you're not taking someone else's ideas and you're not giving them credit. Okay, that's the main thing. We're giving, we want to give credit uh, to a person's ideas. We want to attribute someone's ideas to the person who's responsible for, for saying it. All right, so try to finish this up, guys. Uh, finish this assignment, making sure that you're uh, removing all the comments. We don't want any comments along the right-hand side of the screen. We want uh, citations where they're needed within each sentence. We want to make sure that we have references at the very bottom of the document, alphabetized, A comes before B comes before C. And if you're not sure, ask, right? If you have a type of reference that you're not sure how to include. A lot of times if you just search book with no, how about this, website, website, with no author, APA 7th edition. I would recommend, guys, that you start including, if you're going to search, type APA 7th edition and then website with no author. All right? I, I'm, figure, I'm trying to find out how do I include a reference for a website with no author, APA 7th edition, because 7th edition, again, it's brand new, but it's a little bit different then sixth edition. If you're following sixth edition, you're likely to make a mistake. But here we got lucky, right? Website with no author, APA citation style, seventh edition. That's probably going to give us what we want. And voila. Look what we found. We found in-text citation, quotation, in-text citation. When it says in-text citation, it's the same as a citation, right? When I say, when I use the word citation, it's an in-text citation. But here we have an example of a paraphrase, right? We use the title of the specific document, comma, and then the year. If the title of the document is long, use a shortened version of the in-text citation. You can also use the, an ellipsis. You can use the first five words of the title and then dot, dot, dot. Okay, quotation, this is what it looks like. And here's the reference. All right, so most of the time you can just search and find what you're looking for online. And as the seventh edition becomes older, right? Because again, it's it's only been out within probably six months. It's not not even a year. Um, more, more and more websites are going to be this type of information. So it's going to be easier to find this. But you know, first search online, search the uh, the presentation that I shared with you guys today, and then if you have questions, shoot me a chat, and I'll upload an example from the 114 examples that I have from this publication manual. All right, questions? Any questions? I have a question. Um Yes. Uh, so my two videos are from TV news. Um, well, I I found the videos in in YouTube, but they are from uh, from channels um, from TV channels. All right. Uh, so they the um, the I don't know them the YouTube channel. Um, upload the the video, but they are not. I don't know how to say. It. They they don't own that video. I mean, they upload it. I don't okay. Know. Is all right. Is there um 
Is there a, a name? Is it a person's name? That like the name of the channel? What's the name of the channel? Mm, I don't know. Let me let me look for it because I have two two videos, and one of them um, is from the the TV channel called Imagen TV, mm -hmm. and the other one is from. Mm, I don't know. I think is it. It is. Um, uh, just wait. <laughs> I'm looking for it. All right. Let me. Let me. Can I offer you a suggestion, Mariana? First, do you mm -hmm. see my? Do you see my screen? No. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Let me. I'm sorry. Let me. I thought I was sharing my screen. So let me. Uh, One second here. Okay, now I'm sharing my screen. And let me go back. I had opened the image for YouTube. All right, so now do you see my screen? Mm -hmm. All right, so notice these three examples here, Cuts, Fogarty, and University of Oxford. I would choose one of these they they include three different examples be, precisely because youtube has all kinds of different types of you know videos but i'd like for you to take a look at your example and see which of these three you think is the it's is the most uh, either similar or the most applicable so for example if there is a person's name associated to the video now the the person's name could be the person in the video, or it could be the name of the channel, right? But notice here, this is a good example where you have Grammar Girl. Grammar Girl is the name of the channel, and so they put it in brackets. And then they put this Fogarty, who is probably the person in the video, right, to indicate the person in the video. And and then the rest of the information, the, the the title of the video, and then video here is in brackets, and then YouTube here, and then the the URL. All right. Now, if there's no one person, if it's a news article, and there's really not one person really associated with the video, then maybe it makes most sense to indicate here if it's a CNN uh, broadcast then maybe you put CNN here at the very beginning, right? If there's no author whatsoever, you put CNN, and then you put this information, and then the title of the video, and then YouTube. And if it's a, you know, if it's a, uh, a broadcast, right? And in this case, then we're not including the the name of the YouTube channel we're only including in this case University of Oxford. Do you see what I mean? Okay, I had this question because of what it says below in the image that it says the person or group who uploaded the videos created. I mean, because the video the the YouTube channel is Quiero TV Aguascalientes. And in the video, it says it's from a from a TV show called Ocho TV Aguascalientes. That's why I was mm, I wasn't sure about which one. Okay, but is the person the the channel? Does it have the person's name? Mm, yes, at the at the end of the video, it says a name. I think that that's the creator of the. Of the media. What's the name of the the YouTube channel? Mm, Quiero TV Aguascalientes. That's the name of the channel. Mhm. Mm and the the broadcast is like news related. It's like a news broadcast. Mhm. Mm Okay, then I would include in, in Spanish the title of the news broadcast, right? Um, 
because here it's the group. It says the person or group who's uh, who uploaded the video is credited as the author. So here in this case, it's the group. The group is the TV channel, the name, the YouTube channel in this case, which is also part of a a news broadcast, right? Mm-hmm. And so I would I would use this third example that, where it says University of Oxford. I think this is going to be your uh, your best option and not worry about the per individual person's name that you found at the end of the video. Okay. 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 All yeah. right. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. All right, guys, we're just about out of time, but these are the types of questions that I'm expecting. If you guys are coming across weird references that you're not sure how to, uh, to include, Find, try to search for it online just so that you practice searching for these types online. And then let me know if you need to see an example. Give me as much information as you can, and I'll try to find the best example for you for including in your references. All right, but I want to give everyone one more day to complete uh, your citations now and references. Okay, I understand this is your first time, but I want to get this assignment. I want to get it right so that you can use this as an example for future classes when you're asked to write an academic essay according to APA. Any final questions, guys? Uh, ben, I do have one. Yes, go ahead. In my second source, there is no any author, so I don't know what to do. And what kind of reference is it? Um, a page. A website? Yes. All right. And can you include the link in... Uh, in the chat? Yes. So I can take a look at it. I mean, I was looking for the author names, but I don't see where is it. OK, I'll take a look. Sometimes there are, there are no authors, right? So that's possible, but I'd like to take, take a look. Uh, guys, for everybody else, I'm going to be online here to uh, follow up with uh, uh, Kim's question. Uh, you guys are free to go if you need to, or stick around if you have additional questions. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and conclude the class for today, and um, we'll continue tomorrow uh, with with the next with the next uh, next class with the next topic. Okay, so for everybody else, I'll see you guys, and uh, again, I'll be here for a few more minutes here to answer any questions. All right, Kim. So let's take a look here. Let me share my screen so you can see what I see. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, so this looks like a news organization. Oh, it looks like it says a newsletter, the weekly newsletter. Okay. All right, so so this still looks relatively news newsy. <laughs> so let's look at our example in Microsoft Teams. Maybe. All right, so yeah, and this. All right, Kim, uh, one second here. I'm going to double check here the book, so give me one minute here.
All right. Uh, All right, uh, Kim, I'm going to upload an image here with an example, but I'm going to go ahead and explain uh, how I would do this. I would start, I would begin your reference with, let me open this up. I would begin with the title of the website, The Week, okay? So I would start with The Week and then period, and in space, and then in parentheses, I would include the, uh, I would say 2020, comma, January 23rd, in parentheses. And then period. And then I would include the title of the page, What Are Women Banned From Doing in Saudi Arabia? Mm -hmm. And and then I would italicize como inclinada, right? I would italicize the title of the article. So what are women banned from doing in italics? Okay, then period. And then the URL. I would copy and paste the URL here from the top. Mm -hmm. All right, that's how I would do the the reference. The citation you're going to include in parentheses first, instead of the author, you're going to include the week. Mm -hmm. All right, comma, and then just the year 2020. Okay. Uh, wait. Uh, wait a minute, let me make sure that's right. Yeah. Yeah, just, just the year is fine in mm -hmm. the citation. All right, but in the reference, I would include the month and the day, but the year first. So 2020 comma and then January 23rd parentheses in the reference. OK, mm -hmm. all right. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Anybody else need an example of a reference? Not sure if anybody's even here. So Chris, Nayanira. Any questions? I just have a question. So we have to write all the references at the end of the document? Yes. Mm -hmm. OK. And references you, you used in your paragraph. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then uh, I think we'll go ahead and stop there, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message in Microsoft Teams. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow, all right? Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.